Good morning and welcome to another adventure. Later on we'll be visiting this desert, but for now, back to Marrakesh to grab some breakfast. Good morning, it's a brand new day in Marrakesh. We're going to leave our room now and go up and have some breakfast. So we made our way up to the rooftop and found this nice cosy spot where we were given a selection of jams, cheese and butter with fresh orange juice and mint tea. So the Moroccan tea is so nice, it's sweet, it's just full of minty goodness. There's so much sugar in this but it tastes really good, really refreshing and it's just so nice hearing all the birds and the cocks crowing in the distance, even in the city. The food kept coming as we got some slices of pear and peach, a yoghurt, cake, some kind of bread, a pancake and an omelette. There's so much food here, it's crazy, they really do feed you a lot, which is nice. Set us up for the day, I'm just going to tuck into this omelette while it's nice and hot. After breakfast, it was time to head down to the main square. So we're heading down to one of the souks here. It's the biggest in, definitely in Marrakesh, but it could be the biggest in Morocco. And it's one of the oldest souks. So this is Souk Semarine, Morocco's largest souk, which has been around for over a thousand years. This has to bring a list of places to visit if you come to Marrakesh, with its interconnecting passageways full of stalls selling spices, clothing, wooden carvings and even pottery. It's a great place to shop. This is so cool, there's so many little kind of interwoven passageways and stuff. There's so many shops and places that you can buy stuff. Definitely a soup that's worth visiting, I'll tell you that much. We came across this spy shop which looked too good to pass up and met this lovely guy who helped us navigate all the spices. So starting here by the 35 ingredients, the typical Moroccan blend, it's called Ras Al Hanout. Literally Ras Al Hanout is the literal translation of the head of the shop. So basically this is the boss of all spices. It has 35 ingredients all in one, neither spicy or sweet or salty, but flavorful. And this is the secret to the Moroccan cuisine, like tagine, couscous, uh, all kinds of meat except fish. The second special spice we've got in here, it's curry, Moroccan curry. Now this is sweet, mild curry. It works for rice, for soup and chicken. There is a special dish, we call it uh, chicken with lemon, preserved lemon. If you're gonna have this or if you had it already, make sure to have it in a good restaurant because it comes with this. This is the saffron, the gold. You know why saffron is expensive, by the way? Oh. It's uh, picked from a flower, three pistols for each flower before the sun goes up. Oh, it's crocus wow. flower. When the sun goes up, the flower closes. No more saffron for people. Uh, the flower grows one, one week a year and one hectare of land to give one kilogram of this thing. Oh my gosh. That's why this is the most expensive spice in the world. How to know the real saffron, please? Okay. Three pistols always attached, connected together. If it's not connected, it's corn silk. That's why you want to make sure it's always connected. And if you smell this, please, it's, it smells rich. Oh wow, that is really rich. The Moroccan saffron is the best saffron in the world. There comes Spain, Iran, and Kashmir, India or Pakistan saffron. Now, since we cultivate this thing here, it doesn't cost as much as overseas because we actually make it. Other typical Moroccan spices, with the spiciest of them all, harissa. Harissa right here, this is the spicy. And you can spell it for me. <laughs> <laughs> that is really, really cool. This is such a nice spice shop. The guys are very, very friendly, very chilled. They let you just wander around. There's no kind of pressure to buy. There's no none of that. It's just take your time, take it in. If you want something cool, if you don't, that's okay. And they've got all the information for you if you need it. So you can just kind of wander around and have a very relaxing sort of chill around these spices. And there's oils, there's herbs, there's all kinds of stuff. I'm like, what is this? 
our ginger, we've got ginger, dried ginger, they've got everything here, almond oil, of course. So after shopping in the spice shop, we carried on exploring the markets. So that was really funny. The guys at the shop, like the, the last shop I went to, where we got, we got a little camel, a little ornament, and we were haggling it right down, and he was like, oh my god, he was getting so frustrated with me, because I was like, a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower, but we managed to get it down. When you're in the souks, or in Morocco generally, you've got to get comfortable haggling. They're going to come up with a big figure. Don't be afraid to drop right down to a price that you're comfortable with. But obviously, don't go too cheap because then that kind of goes into being rude then. So just as a nice balance between a, a price that you're comfortable with and a good price for them as well. Don't be afraid to walk away if you can't get a price you like. There's always other stalls and someone else who's willing to strike a deal with you. After all that haggling, we decided to grab an ice cream. Uh, caramel, let's try. This is so tasty. It's one of the nicest ice cream ever. Doesn't he always say that when he tries something? Mm. So this ice cream is five dirham, so it's ten dirham for two. It's almost like a gelato in style. Really good. And I also got a Moroccan sweet to try. They have lots of different flavours. We didn't have any coins on us, so we only got this one. It's like a lemony kind of almost like a little cake. It's crispy on the outside, it's almost fluffy like coconut on the inside with a lemon flavour. It's quite nice. Right, let's get back to it. We spotted this cool looking shop with wood carvings and Tig had his eye on this chess set which he wanted to try and barter for. We're going to start around 250. Yeah. 260. 280. 280. 270. 270. We struck a deal at 270 dirham. I would have started at a lower price, so you have more wiggle room when it comes to haggling. But Tig was happy at the price at 270 dirham, which is around £21. After a morning of shopping, we left the souks and made our way back to our hotel, spotting these cool performers. <laughs> So we bought some Moroccan sweets. They're very sticky on the outside, all of them. But I'm going to go for this this red one here. I'm curious what it tastes like. Mmm, that's coconut in there. Super sticky. I know it's red, but it actually has a slight strawberry taste as well, mixed with the coconut. So it is very, very tasty. These kind of sweets aren't my go-to, you know, but they're a nice sweet snack. I'm probably gonna bring the rest back to the UK, but the last I'm gonna try is this. It looks a bit like a spring roll, but it's got honey all around it. Wow. That one is really good. So it's kind of almost like a hazelnutty, chocolatey, peanutty taste in that. And it's really, really tasty. Kind of bit into now, it's like, ooh. That's my favorite one so far, I think really tasty but these Moroccan sweets and they were a fixed price so there was a hundred dirham for a box which is about eight pounds so not bad at all after chilling in our room for a while it was now time to hop on our bus as we were traveling to Agafi a desert which is 45 minutes drive away from Marrakesh after a 20 minute drive, we stopped off at a place that specialises in argan oil products. Mm -hmm. 
we went up to the roof to sample some of the oils and try some berber tea. I tried the different oils with bread, the honey and argan oil being the most unique and my favourite. Next we quenched our thirst with a nice cup of berber tea. It tastes different to the Moroccan tea that I've had before. There's definitely another flavour in there, like ticks and can maybe star anise, I don't know. It's very nice, it's kind of slightly floral aftertaste. This whole stop felt quite rushed and more time was spent on trying to sell us products than letting us enjoy the tea. But hey ho, we carried on with the journey and watched as the landscape began to change, eventually making it to the desert. So this is where we'll be eating later. So after getting our tables reserved, it was time to head down to meet our camels. This little camel will be my travel buddy, but while getting on, Things didn't quite work out the way I'd hoped. So that was scary because my camel just decided to get up when I wasn't on it and uh, I was having to hang on. If I'm on, everything's all good. Oh my god. You alright there, Tig? It's quite bumpy. After a bumpy start, I got into the ride and enjoyed seeing the surrounding area. Though it's nothing like the experience we had in the Sahara years ago, it was still nice riding the camels in the cool of the evening in such a unique setting. Definitely a very bouncy ride. And my one is pretty high up off the floor and very excitable. Thanks for the ride, little one. That was a nerve wracking camel ride. It was fine. I just got a bit nervous at the beginning because I tried to get on the camel and it's quite was quite wide. So I got part of my leg on and then it got up in the air and I was hanging on for dear life. And obviously I've got a broken wrist. So I hurt it quite a bit trying to hold on there and hold on to my camera at the same time. No harm done though. Now we're gonna go and have some food apparently. So this will be where we'll be eating dinner. There are lots of different tour groups all gathered here to enjoy some food and watch the sun go down. The camel rides continued as our starter arrived. We were having a take on a Berber soup called a haria. So I'm gonna try the soup. This has got kind of um, spaghetti almost in the middle, or noodles in the middle. very cumin soup but when you dip it with the bread it almost tastes like, like a minestrone type soup when you dip it with the bread but actually it's cumin <laughs> nice it's so surreal everything's going off at the same time there's people riding camels coming along there's music down there a whole lot <laughs> Yeah. 
Next, a vegetable and couscous dish to share. Could I look like more of a tourist? Probably not. <laughs> the sun is so bright, I've got to wear my sunglasses. So I've got vegetarian couscous here as our next course. That's a lovely flavour. The vegetables, I'm always in Morocco, I'm really impressed with how they're always infused with flavour and then very, very soft and tender. The sauce in this is absolutely delicious. I wish there was more of it. It's so, so tasty. Oh my god. Mm. I'm just in my own element here. This is so nice. Favourite food of the trip so far, actually. And that is saying something. Then it was time for the tagines. Tig was having a chicken tagine. It's like a stewed curry done with Moroccan spices. It's really delicious. Now time for me to try my vegetable tagine. Now time to try the tagine. A bit of carrot, a bit of cabbage here. Not gonna lie, there's not much flavour there. It does taste quite like potato, that kind of flavour, boiled vegetable. Not super impressed with that one, if I'm honest. The couscous that we've got here with the sauce is just amazing. But this tagine is probably the, the least favourite tagine of the trip. We enjoyed the sounds of the live music as we watched the sun setting over the desert. So I'm going to take my seat where it all starts, let the fun and games begin. As people gathered and formed a circle, it started to get dark and the music and dancing began. started dancing and I decided to join them. It was so much fun. Everyone seemed to really enjoy the atmosphere, dancing around the fire under the night sky. So after the dancing, it was finally time for the fire show. That fire dancer was amazing and what a way to finish the night. Another great day in Morocco.
Next time, we visit the palace, try some more great food, and enjoy our last night in Marrakesh. So until next time guys, take care and we'll see you soon.